Hey guys, and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. We're stopped here in Level Cross, North Carolina at the Petty Museum to see what's new. Come on, let's have a look. Always a pleasure to visit the Petty Museum, but this visit was a little bit different. Yes, I want to go through the museum. There's always something uh, a little bit different and even new, and this was no exception, this visit. But uh, my main reason for stopping was to get permission and set an appointment to come back and photograph, get some detailed photographs of uh, a couple of cars. And if you remember the 81 Buick, the Daytona 5, hundred winner from 81 I did the video that um, just full detail I had gotten permission and one of the guys from the shop came over opened the hood opened the trunk uh, gave me access to the interior and let me photograph everything so we've got some great detail accurate pictures of the actual car that won the 81 Daytona 500 and a lot of the original cars are still in the museum and I want to get permission to do a few of those all right, so that was the reason for the stop was to get permission and set an appointment. So we'll be looking uh, for some upcoming stuff. I'm not going to tell you which cars they are yet, but I'm, I want to do these little by little by little. And uh, Sharon, who's over the um, museum, uh, Richard's daughter, is just absolutely awesome. Uh, she She's just great to work with. And um, I look forward to, to getting those and sharing those with you in the future, too. But as I walk through the museum, uh, well, first of all, when you pull up just to the left of the, um, the shops in the museum is the house that Lee Petty lived in. Lee and his wife, Elizabeth, lived in, and Richard was born upstairs. Uh, and Maurice was born here, too. And uh, the house, as I understand it, is open to the public during uh, special events. And uh, but it is still still there, and it is a historic site. But when you get into the museum, one of the first things you see is you as you go past the the entry in the gift shop. There is Lee Petty's uh, Daytona 500 winner, the Oldsmobile, and uh, man, just just some great stuff. Look at the interior of this thing, and and it's like. Wow, uh, when you think of the safety in today's cars and you look at this thing with a bench seat in it, whoa. Uh, but just always cool to look this thing over. And uh, the next thing right in front of this is the 1967 Plymouth that won 27 races in one season, 10 in a row. And this is the original car. This is not a replica. Um, I want to do a detailed thing of this because I want to do a build of this car too. But this is not one of the ones I'm talking about right right now that I've, I've set the appointment for. But this is just an awesome car. She sits low to the ground. It's just a mean looking little car. 67 Plymouth. And I took a few detail shots here too. Um... Love the grill on these old things. Notice the screen that's over the center section there. Great big pipes. Uh, just uh. And notice the rims are painted silver. And there's your Goodyear, uh, the blue, blue streak or the blue line tires. The gas inlet with a lanyard that goes um, on the from the body to the gas cap, so you can't drop it, it roll under the car, or something like that. And I like the way the tube comes out, and you've got the oversized uh, little catch there. And on the rear of the car, you see that there's a plate over the license plate area, but instead of being aluminum plates over the uh, tail lights, they had the stock tail lights still in there. Of course, this was '67, and also notice that slight little uh, airfoil back there is kind of glazed in or glassed into the the body and we're going to get some really good close-up pictures of that um, in, in the video that we do for the detail on this car. A quick look at the interior on this one. You see how the dash is made there. I don't know why it's raised in the center but I am going to find out. And you see the way the fuel line is run through the 
tube and just made right into the floor. Rear suspension and shock mounts. Kind of cool the way they did that. And uh, there's they've also widened these wheel tubs. And I'll uh, I'll show you that uh, how they did that in in when we get to this car again. I've already got a good many pictures of this car, but uh, I'll share some other ones with you. This is kind of cool too. The steering wheel, notice that the electrical tape is not only wrapped around the steering wheel, but on the spokes for the steering wheel as well. I think that's kind of cool. And the seat is almost like a stock bucket seat. And you see the racing harnesses uh, over to the, to the bars behind it. And notice the uh, tubing with the padding around it that's on the right side that's just kind of the uh, retainer to keep you in the seat in the turns <laughs> and notice from the rear roll bar how foot how much further the seat is forward there's a bar that comes out that the seat is mounted to there this is just cool old vintage stuff also notice that the roll bars on the far side as they go into the aluminum the roll bars that go from the uh, the hoop or well the back bar the bars that go out and around the sides, they're inside the doors in, underneath that uh, aluminum paneling. Sorry about that, guys. Getting tongue-tied there a little bit. Then one of my favorite cars, the 2 Plus 2. This thing was just bad looking sitting still. And I do want to do some really good detail pictures. There is the Salvino kit out there. I want to get some good detail pictures of this. Um... Just, again, a bad-looking little car. One of the things that always fascinated me or I want to know more about is because of that big arrow window in the back, you notice just how short that deck lid, that trunk is. Very. So uh, I want to get a look in there. I want to see how everything's arranged. So uh, I'm, I'm eager to get into that, too. I think that's going to be a ton of fun. And notice that there's the five-spoke chrome wheels on this. And I know that varied from race to race sometimes, too. But uh, look forward to getting you some detailed pictures on this car as well. A lot of the pictures actually in these things. One of the new things that was in the museum that kind of caught me off guard, but I was tickled to death to see it. I, I spent a lot of time taking pictures of it, too. Uh, and if it's still there, I may try to see if we can get some uh, close-up inside, all that kind of stuff, maybe raise the hood. Uh, if, if we can get permission, we'll see. But Wendell Scott, uh, if you're not familiar with Wendell Scott, he was the first African-American NASCAR driver, and uh, he had a win, too. And uh, Wendell Scott, great story. Um, I remember him racing when I was growing up, too. And uh, this is one of his old cars, 37 Ford. And as you see, number 11 VA. Look at those great big, that big hub and uh, the drum brakes. Shot of the front, screws holding on the little covers over the headlight panels and the catcher there on the, uh, over the radiator, dirt catcher. You notice how that's curved there too. And notice the canvas strap holding the hood down. Simple but effective stuff back in the day. Another look at that hub and uh, suspension. You've got a uh, leaf, leaf spring suspension there. Look at the driver's side front tire. Just a white wall. Of course, back in the day, you just drove you know, whatever you could find. This rear tire is kind of an aggressive looking dirt tire there, isn't it? And a quick look at the V8. We'll come back to that in a minute. A uh, single barrel carburetor with a flathead, Ford flathead V8. Really cool stuff. Notice right here the uh, hinges on the hood. Looks like door hinges. And they probably were. But hey, long as they work, that's great. And look at the driver's side door. The seat was kind of a 
to me it looked like it was a, a mix of a, a stock seat and a little bit of a custom custom make of course everybody kind of did their own thing too and the old banjo style vintage steering wheel now check out this back bumper I don't know if you noticed on the front bumper though you can go back and look at it but it was just a just a tube and that almost the top bar that's holding the upper bar there uh, for the back bumper almost looks like a universal joint doesn't it really unique really cool car I, I really would like to see more of this one next up this one i wasn't sure what it was at first and then i read the sign and uh i'm gonna read it to you real quick uh it just says sometime in the 1970s the king dislocated his shoulder in an accident and needed a way to uh, exercise while at home to get back in uh, race shape an employee of penny enterprises made this rig and the king set it up in front of his tv at home every night he would work out his shoulder while watching TV. This home therapy worked, and he was back in the races, race car soon. Um, but is that not just kind of cool? Can you imagine sitting in front of your TV in this little thing and turning a wheel and, and just using it as a workout? Are any wheels turning, guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay and over to the next building you see here uh in this video uh, i just did a, a panning when we got into the next building this part where you see the 21 car there uh that's a kyle petty kind of corner there a couple of the cars and you see on the left there the 45 that's another one um but these cars as i said are switched around quite often and um uh, pretty cool Right here, I know that Salvino's is getting ready to do the uh, the 7-Eleven Grand Prix of Kyle. And um, I'm going to see what I can do on some detailed pictures of that car, too. But I had to stop at this Sitgo car. I think this is the one that won the World 600 at Charlotte. And um, it's on display in the museum. And you can see uh, I took a few detail shots of the interior. And I may see if uh, down the road I go ahead and get permission to uh, get this one opened up and uh, get some uh, some good shots of this too. And by the way, Mike's decals makes a gorgeous set of power slide decals or has those uh, for this car. And notice it's not the gray interior that we see in a lot of the more modern cars. Uh, or the this era era car, but uh, rather blue. And note that uh, rear fender blister kind of over the tire there, how that comes out. Every time I'm at the museum, I always, always, always have to stop and look over this car because it's so cool. This uh, 26 Model T is... Um, well, as you see here, this car belonged to Lee Petty. He bought it because it reminded him of a car he first dated his wife Elizabeth in. Uh, it's like the first car he ever bought. That car he traded a horse for. <laughs> cool, huh? Always stop and look at that because I, 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 those T models and A models, all of them just great, great little old cars. Very nice. And uh, jumping over, one of the other things they had on display here was this Goodyear dirt tire. Um, this this tire was run at uh, Bristol on the dirt race. And I think it was, on, yeah, Eric Jones's car. And um, March 29th, 2001. So this is a modern tire, as you see. And here's a shot of it from the side. And right beside that, they had another dirt tire. This is a Firestone dirt tire. This tire was made only to run on dirt. The last time that uh, they raced, talking about NASCAR on a dirt track, was Raleigh on September the, I think that's the 30th, 
1970, and Richard Petty won that race. So there you go. And here's a look at the side of that tire. This one, every time I look at this engine, I'm, in, I'm intrigued by it. I, I want to see if I can find out more about this one. Uh, an experimental engine built uh, here at Petty Enterprises, but that's kind of vague, isn't it? And here's a look at the engine. And had I been in that side of the shop, um, when this guy walked up, I would have asked him. <laughs> yeah, I ran into Dale Lindman. What an awesome conversation. He is one of those guys that, you know, when you meet somebody for the first time and you just feel like you've known them your whole life. Well, I've spoken to uh, Dale Inman in the past, but it's been short because it, he was busy. There was things going on, and he's walking through with some papers in his hands, and he stopped to talk to me. I didn't flag him down or anything. Uh, what a guy, what a guy, and what a, a just a plethora of knowledge and, and history that, that Dale has too. But uh, what a great visit. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, tip my hat to all these guys. But Dale, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as I was about to leave, I went out the uh, side door. Instead of going back through the museum, I saw the nose of this Dodge sitting back beside the building. So I wandered back there. And here's this Dodge in Merry Christmas. And I guess this is getting ready to be put away with the with the rest of the Christmas decorations. Uh, but it had the Victory Junction camp. You notice the wreath and the Petty logo in the center of the door. And uh, look at the nose there. And this was the Victory Junction uh, logo that was on the hood. And uh, really cool, really cool. And when I walked back around the building and was headed to the car, a couple guys were rolling a race car out of the building raised the hood, raised the trunk, and uh, they went back in. And a young man was there photographing it. And I stepped over to him and I said, hey man, do you mind if I photograph along with you? And he's like, no, not at all. So here's just some detail pictures. And I'm gonna go out um, just with maybe a little music or something and let you take a look at these detail shots. But from this particular year, this is Monte Carlo. Um, and the young man that was taking the pictures uh, told me that he was taking pictures to go in apparently a sale thing because this car was for sale. And uh, he said, are you interested? <laughs> I said, nah, I've already got two or three of them in the garage now. So, <laughs> And we both laughed about that. But um, anyway, really cool, uh, really cool car. And uh, so if you're interested, apparently it's for sale. But uh, I've got you some really good detail pictures, interior, inside the, the deck lid, the, the underside bracing, all that stuff, under the hood, engine compartment. Um, there was a few things that I actually saw in here. The location of the oil filter was a little different than I've usually seen it. But uh, guys, enjoy. Be sure you head over to Hobby Nut Models. Check them out. If you're not a subscriber, be sure you hit that sub button. Uh, we appreciate it very much, uh, all the support, and we want to keep bringing you videos. Guys, God bless. Thanks for tagging along on this one, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks a bunch, guys.